welcome to another episode <laughs> of the nonprofit show. You can tell we're already having a lot of fun because we have our guests here from Bloomerang's booth, Josh Meyer. Welcome, you two. Let me get through a little bit of housekeeping because we want to make sure that we let everybody know where we are, who we are. I'm Julia Patrick. The nonprofit nerd is joining us today in New Orleans at the AFP Icon uh, Conference. Again, we would not be here without the largesse and sponsorship from these amazing partners. And they include Bloomerang, which is where we are producing our live show from. We'll get to Bloomerang in just a second. We also want to give our thanks to the American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, the Nonprofit Nerd herself, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Hey, if you want to find any of our nearly 800 episodes, you can find us on all these streaming platforms, podcasts, and now we have a new app. Go ahead and download it, and we will get to you. You can just scan this um bar this uh, QR code and get to it. It's really a lot of fun and super magical. Again, we're coming to you from New Orleans, the AFP Icon 2023 annual conference. And we are super excited to toss it back over to you, Jarrett Ransom. Who do you have with us today? Thank you, Julia. This is none other than Josh Myers at Bloomerang. And I have to say, today is his birthday. Uh, that, that, that is true. <laughs> Did you say that? Wasn't seeing that coming. I, yes, I should have expected that. You should have expected that. <laughs> if I had a cupcake, it would have been here too. But really excited to have him. As you know, Bloomerang has been a fantastic supporter of the nonprofit show since we started in March of 2020. So it's been fantastic. But Josh, I'd love to know, what are you seeing here at the conference? What are some things that have really just you know, stood out for you? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's great. We love being we love being here because you're we're on the ground and just chatting with people. Uh, a lot of customers stopping by. A lot, a lot of people stopping by to find you know new solutions. Um, I think you know there's uh, we did a session yesterday uh, that was really interesting. Some new research that we just re re released. It was uh, we were in the field in November of 2022, asking fundraisers how did 2022 go. And what are they looking forward in 2020? What are the new things that they're looking to do um, in 2023? And there's some really, really interesting takeaways. I think one of the big things that we saw is that uh, now that this we really focused on the small to medium nonprofits, so nonprofits that are five million or less in annual revenue. Which is uh, a lot. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. And uh, there was some really key takeaways. One was around board and board engagement, and it's like. Uh, we saw that 75% of them that responded, roughly 75, like uh, were uh, all of their board members were making gifts to their donors, but there's still 25 where the the, uh, the board wasn't participating. And we had a really great conversation with a couple of our friends, our consultant friends yesterday at the, uh, the session, Kashana Palmer, uh, Rachel Meir, Jen Shane from uh, University of Philanthropy. And they all were like, yes, you have to, if they're going to be on your board, you got to make sure that they're they're giving, and they, are you setting up the right expectations? And we had a really nice, thoughtful conversation on that about uh, tips and tools to so get your board more engaged. And really engaged. Another really big thing that we saw in that research was uh, planning. You know, we all like like to plan, but like to finding the time for planning is a lot of it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Plan plan. You have to plan to plan, and what we saw in the data was that about forty, only about forty percent of the um, respondents had actually um, had some sort of development of funders in place. And it was like, all right, how can we help them? So there's a lot of good conversation around where can they find resources. And I think we probably could do several shows out of this and bring some bring some um, experts in. But it was just really good to have that dialogue with the folks on the ground really understanding uh, their perspective uh, and how, how and, and then trying to connect them because I, I, we can't really show, I wish we could share the camera around here, but there's all these other vendors and partners here um, who are looking to help help the nonprofit community. And so I think there's, um, there's a good kickoff uh, to the day today. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of excitement going on, right? There's tons, and right now it's lunch hour, so 
9.30 Pacific is 11.30 a.m. here in Nolan. No, and uh, so there's, there's tons of people here on the showroom floor grabbing their box lunch, networking, talking to so many of the defenders and the sponsors that are here. So there's, just as last year, right, like so much excitement. You know, Jared, it's it's been such an interesting thing to see how things stopped because of the pandemic. I, you know, AFP Icon has always been such a resource. And then to have it, you know, go away and, and change and morph. This is really, this particular, um, you know, conference in New Orleans is really the first time a lot of our nonprofits are coming together. So it's really an exciting thing. Are you seeing that, Josh? Yeah, I mean, we were talking to the AFP organizers, and I think they have over 3,700 people, which is like a record for them. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Mind blowing. And so we are seeing a ton of traffic. Uh, we're seeing friends that we haven't seen in three, four, five years, and it's just so great to be back in person. We did it last year. It just wasn't quite the same. People were masked, and we were all... And the hugging was, I'm a hugger, right? So that was my biggest challenge last year. Yeah. So uh, we're just hugging and, and, and seeing our friends. And, uh, you know, it is, it's been really phenomenal. I think a lot of really good interacting. Um, some great. I mean, the cocktail, you go to a reception, it's the cocktail receptions, and they were, like, full last night. And a couple of hurricanes here and there. The, the drink, not the weather. Although we did have some bad weather on season. I don't know, a couple of days ago. Anyway, the drink. Uh, but it was, uh, it's just really good to connect with people and see, see how they're doing and how we can help them and, and just allowing them sort of to connect together, right? Sharing best practices, what's working, uh, you know, in Phoenix, what's working in New York and allowing them to sort of, you know, across the country, across the globe, really. I think there's over 40, 30 to 40 people coming in here nationally, a ton of people from Canada and a handful of people from Mexico. And then just, I was looking at the West China, I think, a couple of Europe, Europe, like all over the place. So it's really, it is such a central, fun place to bring everything together. It's just chat fundraising and nerd out about it. Geek out about it. Nerd out, nerd out was yeah, right. Yeah. There is an AFP icon app. So everyone who's here has downloaded the app and you can see, you know, all of the speakers. You can see uh, the breakout sessions, the showroom floor, you know, everyone who's here. Um, so it's it's been a great time, yeah. And I and I do think that people are back this year, even more leaning into it. Yeah. Jared, one of the things that you mentioned last year at, at AFP ICON, which was held in, in Las Vegas, you were amazed at the technology. Now, Bloomerang is a technology company, and we've come to rely upon them for all of the different things that they can offer, you know, um, our sector and the things that are going on. What is it that you're seeing as well? Are you seeing more technology? What are your thoughts about this? And then, and then maybe Josh will, will share his thoughts as well. Yeah, absolutely, Josh. Last year I shared how it was such a large technology forward conference, right? With fundraising at the focus, but so technology forward. Uh, the showroom floor definitely has a lot of tech. That is that does not change. I'm also seeing quite a bit of individual consultants that have booths here, right? So how might they be able to support in using this tech or be able to support the organizations to do X, Y, and Z? Uh, but currently, like if we you know move any degrees right now, we are definitely seeing tech booths. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Doc? A lot of technology. I think some of the new cutting edge or more stuff that I'm that we haven't seen before. Um, uh, vendors, uh, so also software, but vendors and partners looking at crypto, looking at stock, looking at automating donor advice. Like how can you make that easier? They know some of the smaller uh, and mid-sized nonprofits, like they want to get in in that space because there's there's money to be had and their donors want to donate that way, but it's sometimes hard to sort of navigate. Um, that process. The other thing that we're starting to see, and a lot in the um, sort of the data piece of this, right, is AI, right? So our friends over at Donor Search, right, our friends at Windfall, right, they're all using AI to try and match and find that new donor, um, whether that's you know a major major donor, right? There's also automation and AI around sort of uh, ask strings, right? So using the uh, the technology to you know, ask the right amount or put the right 
uh, levels, giving levels on a reply device, right, or in an email. And so that, I think, was on, its, on the precipice last year, but we're definitely seeing more and more of that. Um, you know, the, the world has been taken by chat GPT, uh, sessions around, like, how can you use G, uh, chat GPT in your, in your fundraising and uh, campaigns and uh, so really, really thoughtful um, and interesting conversations about it. You know, it's 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 so interesting because we've been noticing that as well, and we're just taken by. Um, and Jarrett and I have talked about this from the beginning. It seems like there's two camps: people that lean in and that get really excited about these opportunities and a new way of working, and then other organizations that are more reticent. They kind of stand back and step back. And um, I'd love to get your opinion, both of you, on what that looks like with with maybe somebody that comes to AFP icon and they're like whoa this technology is too much for me versus those that are really embracing it yeah you know uh for me that the ai i was going to say i love a good ask screen right like really leveraging your data to maximize the gift of your donors that are already engaged and so really that's looking into your data database to say what was their last gift, or maybe what's that donor's average gift, and how can we lean into that? So I do think that I'm seeing more of that, Julia, and I think the reason I'm seeing more is because, one, it's been around now. I mean, really, if you look at AI, it's not new. The adoption, I think, is what's new, right? And especially the adoption into our sector. So I'm seeing where this technology is much easier to adopt for the smaller to mid sized and it's not a price point, I think, that makes it a little bit more comfortable for them, right? And sort of some of the, the some of the software that's out there, it's just it's, it's easier. Uh, you didn't you didn't need a you don't need a software engineer, right? Uh, they sort of a lot of these uh, partners have been able to package together, so it's uh, easier for them to do. You know, but I hear you, right? I hear it changes hard, right? And so I think if you're a small to medium medium sized nonprofit, that may not be the right thing for you right now, right? Maybe it's just sort of getting your donor database in order or moving to a donor database in spreadsheets, right? Creating a plan. Or creating that plan, right? And so I think for our friends that are listening, chat, you know, I, I wouldn't feel overwhelmed. I think you need to, you know, take the steps that make the right sense for you for right now. If you don't have a donor database, if you don't have a fundraising plan, I would say start there, right? You need the foundation before you can then sort of layer in things like chat GPT or AI or um, crypto and, and stock, right? You want to be able to at least accept those donations with your credit card or check, right? And make sure that you have a really functioning uh, work stream on that on your website, right? Before you start layering. So it's the foundation. You got to get the foundation and then start adding the And that makes me think of stewardship, right? It's like I, I would steward and steward and steward even more and even better before adopting a new process or before adopting a new implementation. Because if you're not stewarding your donors, you're constantly in acquisition. Yeah, yeah, retention is so important, right? And I think that, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like you need, that, that I would say is also part of the foundation, right? You have to have the tools to sort of steward and retain your donors. Because it's so much easier, right, to retain and get them to renew versus the Like I'm basically repeating what she said because like it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And this is why you're the nonprofit nerd, yeah, right? And I'm just the crew chief. Here we go. Right? Fantastic. You know, the, you know, the one thing that I want, you know, people are throwing t shirts, t shirt cannons, like lots of great swag. I want to know where the beginning station is. <laughs> I know we might be missing it. Oh, jeez! I mean, I, I've never said no to a fried food before in my life. Right. <laughs> yeah. What other questions do you have here, uh, Julia? I, you know, honestly, I haven't watched much of the show before. Uh, I did a quick circle around. I wanted to get set up for today's, you know, uh, episode, and then we'll be back tomorrow, of course, for another episode. I'm excited to have more representatives of Bloomery with us tonight we have a dinner so we're doing a, a dinner not only for someone's birthday but, <laughs> but also 
you know, just to connect. And so, you know, this conference really is about connection, building upon those uh, industry relationships, and, you know, how can you support one another? Yeah, so Kishana Palmer's uh, working with the Blue Ring team. Um, she's, I mean, for the, anyone who's here at AFBI Country, love to chat, you, chat with you. She's out sort of gathering what does it mean, what does community mean to fundraisers, and how can you build community, and how can you, uh, you know, tie that in with what the work that we're doing here at Blue Ring. Uh, and really strengthen the community, both for our, uh, our Bloomerang users, but also the greater fundraising uh, We love, you know, one of the favorite things, or one of the things that really drew me to Bloomerang is all of the free educational uh, resources that we provide, whether that be the weekly webinars, or the blog posts, or the e-books, right? And so Kishana is taking all of this in and helping it, and sort of really distilling a lot of data around what people are looking for in community, and how can we use that to to strengthen the, you know, the space, right? Um, and then also, you know, get people tied into Bloomerang so that they are aware of everything that's about. You know, I think that's, that's one of the things that Jarrett and I have both said from the get-go, um, how much we've admired Bloomerang, because it seems like you give so much information away that is frankly proprietary in, in many ways and that you could hold on to that, but you really are amazing at strengthening you know the sector and uh, i think it, it is truly remarkable if you go to the bloomerang.com uh, website and go to the resources uh, tab you will see so much information that is really quantifiable which can help your nonprofit organize many things for their future and so it's pretty remarkable um it sounds to me josh like you're you really like as an organization digging in on this and actually doing more research more than ever. Is that just me observing or is that true? No, I mean, maybe, I, yes, yes. No, I mean, we, we just value that, right? Because we feel like if nonprofits succeed, then we succeed, right? And if they need the data to better understand it, they need the data to be able to go back to their executive director, to go back to their board and say, we need to do X, Y, and Z, and here's the data. Right. It is a much better conversation than saying, I just want this, right? Because it, it's hard to justify that if you're on the other side, if you're the board member or the head of the board or the executive director, right? And so if we can provide that data to help our fundraising friends propel their mission, then everyone wins. And so I think that is, is one of the things that drew me to Bloomerang uh, because of that, because we are able to um, leverage the position that we're in to sort of find fundraising. Wow. I, I've noticed, and I like to say, Bloomerang plays well with others, yes. right? And yeah. so even to my right, you're not able to see them, but maybe tomorrow we can bring them on is a quick, quick books representative, so from Intuit. And that is a wonderful integration that Bloomerang CRM offers. And uh, so to have them there literally next to us in the Bloomerang booth to share how these integrations are good. Julia, you remember we have had um, actually your part-time controller on, right, to talk about the best practices to work between the fundraising team and the accounting team. And so Bloomerang is also leaning into that relationship, leaning into the data that brings all of that together. So um, it's really cool to see the integrations, but to see how it all comes together, as you said, when the nonprofit wins, everyone wins. It's really true, and I, and I think that, you know, Josh, before we let you go, I mean, I, I'm really curious as to when we have these conversations that we can have IRL in real life, it's something like AFP ICON, um, do you see things moving forward more quickly, or is it just, you know, kind of business as usual? I mean, I think, um, I don't know how to that. I think it's like, you know, I think obviously when you're in person, right, you can get done, you can move a little bit faster in a space where everyone is spread out throughout the country or the world, really. And so I think it does allow for those moments of clarity, those moments of you know, things that pop, oh, I never thought about it this way, right? Or, oh, I should try this. 
And that's what conferences are for, right? And I think you can do it virtually. And I love, I love that you all do this virtually every day. But I think being able to do it once or twice a year to bring these brilliant minds together, to bring these practitioners in, to share what they're seeing and how they're, uh, how they're growing their team. It, it's just, you can't compare it. And so I do think it does help accelerate things, move things forward, and gives people new ideas to uh, bring back to the conversation. Well, I'm getting real hoarse. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> There's a lot going on, I know. Uh, yeah, and I, I would agree, you know, and then I also want to share for our friends at Fundraising Academy National University, oh. this this uh, duo will be there at the Cultivate Conference as well. So Yeah, if you haven't signed up, join, uh, join Jared and I. We're going to both be there June 1st, San Diego. Um, and that is, uh, I'm really excited about that. I got that news last week and it made my week. Yeah, that's right. So, and I've seen the Fundraising Academy uh, team, some of the representatives, and um, they had a session this morning, and I, I know that they're going to uh, pop on tomorrow with us here here for the show, and so really looking forward to pulling in some familiar faces, um, so many guests that have been on the show before, um, and really, you know, looking, asking them a lot of the same questions, but I don't think any of them will be nearly as, as uh, well done. You just, you know. <laughs> you gotta go there. <laughs> so, you know, we're we're gonna do. Uh, we're having some. Uh, we're doing some hurricanes in our booth later this afternoon during happy hour. So I just felt like I needed, uh, you know, Dress the where I bring. Make sure we gotta get rid of all those purple. Right? Yes. I'm not sure that that should be a worry, but like. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm just so thrilled that you would invite us back again, uh, Bloomerang, to be in your booth. You know, anyone who's ever done any type of conference work space is at a premium it's expensive and you go inch by inch by inch trying to figure out where everybody needs to be and what you're going to do and so this is very very generous of you all to allow allow us to come and broadcast live um, because it's, it's really an exciting opportunity for everyone you know things are opening back up and we're going to start to be seeing more and more things i mean for example you brought up you know, the um, Fundraising Academy National University's event in June, uh, you know, AFP ICON in, in New Orleans. It's it, This is really going to start to be something that we return to, albeit in a little bit different capacity, I think. And so, um, again, I want to express our gratitude to you for, for allowing us to do this. Jared, if I might, I want to spend just a little bit of time um, thanking our... our um, uh, Thank you all. Are you going to head out? Well, I, I can say. I, I, my, I didn't know if that was my chair to leave or not. <laughs> Friend, I'm, you're, I'm, part, you're part of the show. All yeah. right, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Then I'm staying right here. <laughs> don't don't leave because I gotta keep I gotta keep that that jacket close to my heart because it's like one of the best <laughs> things I've seen. <laughs> all right, all right. I know it's been great. Hey, again, we want to thank everybody who's participated with us. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, the nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. And today, this is special. If you joined us, you will have noticed that the nonprofit nerd is flirting with her beads and her glasses and her boa joined by none other than birthday boy and crew chap crew ch uh, crew captain, captain josh right. myers coming to us live from amazing new orleans at the afp icon 2023 jared it's been a lot of fun thank you so much well the, i'm thank you for putting up with us the energy is high it's going to be high again tomorrow i know but yeah a lot going on and maybe tomorrow i'm able to share where i will be next year oh yeah it's yeah we'll keep it until tomorrow but yeah, it's we'll exciting be, it's exciting i'm excited we'll keep that secret yeah i don't I know love it uh, the Austin, the Austin. Yeah, it's going to be for next year, but I thought you started thinking about it. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks for our sponsors. Especially thanks to Josh and Bluebrain for allowing us uh, some of this prime opportunity here at the Icon. So thank you, Julia. Hey, it's been a lot of fun. And as we end every episode of the Nonprofit Show, we want to remind everyone, especially our friends throughout the country that are in New Orleans, to stay well. So you can do well. Have fun, you two. Have a beignet for me. Oh. oh thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, you two.